So going forward, um, are there any other treatment areas that we should be keeping an eye on? They've got some interesting stuff going in the pipeline. Um, absolutely. You know, you know, Michael, I don't know if you want to uh, talk a little about that Galapagos deal that they did. Um, they were also working on some uh, treatment for NASH, which is another major cause of, of liver damage. Um, and that could be, you know, theoretically a multi or at least a billion dollar drug. Who knows? Right. I mean, you never know with these drugs that are in pipelines. But, you know, it's clear that they want to expand. They want to take some of this money that they're plowing back into R&D. They want to take some of the money that they're, they're, I mean, their, their balance sheet has gotten so big. They have so much flexibility now. Yeah, it's insane. $26.2 billion in cash and other marketable securities. That's up from $11.7 billion at the end of 2014. Yeah. And so you've got to, and, and, and they were very clear that they are planning to uh, pursue some partnerships and potentially acquisitions. You know, Gilead's always been very sort of, well, you know, we're going to do something when the price is right and when the drug is right and when we feel like it, basically. Um, which is something I actually really appreciate about them, because it's another sign of management um, not chasing headlines. You know, this is not management saying, we're going to buy seven companies this year, and we're going to buy 15 next year. They're saying, hey, listen, you know, uh, we recognize the market's down. Maybe there's an opportunity. Maybe there's not. We have all this cash, but we're going to make sure that we deliver it uh, that we that we deliver the best shareholder value we possibly can for this cash, um, and that's yeah, something. That, on, on that front, Michael, yeah. I mean, just to jump right in here, I, I have a quote handy from John Milligan, who's going to be taking over in the top spot at Gilead very soon. Yeah, and you know, in that conference call, he says, um, "I will continue to work hard to help Gilead's business grow beyond antivirals and into new therapeutic areas." And then later on, he went on to say, you know, it's pretty clear that we have to do additional partnerships or find other avenues to broaden the revenue stream there for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and then later on, he even adds, you know, we're very interested in acquiring assets through partnerships. And with a tripling of our revenue over the last few years, the need to do so sooner rather than later is heightened. Yeah. And, and thanks to S&P Cap IQ for that and any other quotes we mentioned. So it's interesting that we're talking about buying other companies and what are they going to do with all this money. Right now, it seems like Gilead's saying the best buy out there in the market right now are our own shares. You know, this is a company that just added another $12 billion in share repurchase agreements after their existing $15 billion one is done. And of course, there's $8 billion left in that old one. $5 billion of this is going to be accelerated share repurchasing, so expected to be completed sometime in this quarter. This is Gilead saying, hello, yeah, we're really cheap right now. We're a great buy. We think we're a great buy. You should think we're a great buy. We're buying up our own stock. Well, and, and what are they trading at right now? Uh, it's, it, they're uh, based on 2015 4P earnings. Is below, yeah. below, seven. Is below seven. Below yeah. seven. <laughs> That's crazy. Below seven. I mean, to put that in perspective, Abvi's you know, and there's a threat to, to potentially to its top selling drug has a Ford PEO ratio that's like nine and a half. Yeah, well, and, and we looked at, uh, I mean, I only looked at Pfizer on a trailing, but theirs was like 22, I think. Yeah, this is really, really low for any company in this industry, especially one that continually posts pretty remarkable growth. Now, I will say that the one thing that I think we're missing in this, this puzzle here, we haven't yet talked about the CEO news. Mm -hmm. So recently, actually the same day as the Merck approval, I believe it was, um, it was announced that longtime CEO John Martin is going to be stepping down from the head position, and he's going to become executive chairman. Um, current president and COO John Milligan, who I believe we heard a quote from at some point during this episode, he's going to become the new CEO on March 10th. This is a brilliant move. I, I'm, you know, too often. Do you not have transitions that are smooth and that are well forecasted? This is the way to do it. You know, you've got a, com a guy who's been at the helm for twenty some odd years, handing it off to a guy who's been at the you know right by his side for twenty plus years. I mean, this is this is the way to do it. Yeah, Mill Milligan is definitely seen as Martin's right hand man, and certainly, um, in in. They'll appear at different conferences, and just in reading through what they've said at those conferences, you can see them very much hewing to very similar philosophies. So I think that, you know, will Milligan be as good for the company as Martin has been? No one knows. But um, but I think that 
if if you've liked Martin's leadership, and certainly I think we have, um, Milligan makes sense as as the as the crown prince.